Richard, welcome. It's your 17th WEF this oh, year. Oh, I stopped it? counting after they gave me the 10-year <laughs> pin, uh, when they, <clears throat> which, they, which Klaus presents to you. Um, if you've been attending 10 uh, Davoses or WEFs. So I think it's fair to say you're a veteran of the WEF. Uh, yeah. what, <coughs> what's your main, main uh, feeling for this year, 2019? I think it could be a, a more interesting Davos. Less fireworks, less show and tell. Um, last year, in my view, Davos behaved the, like, and the people here behaved like teenage girls. It was mayhem. Seeing their rock star. When Donald Trump arrived, there was this giddiness of you know top CEOs taking photographs, selfies to get themselves in the. It, it, was, it was rather unseemly, and also there was a heavy dose of hypocrisy about it. These were the same people who had been excoriating uh, Trump, who were fiercely against all his policies on trade. They liked the tax cuts, but that was about all. And all of a sudden, they were they were scurrying around. Now, we've no Donald Trump. We've no Theresa May, we've no um, Macron. Macron, we've no Zimbabwe president, all because of domestic problems at home, uh, domestic issues. But we've still got Merkel, um, we've still got Abe coming to give us. So I think there is the potential for this WEF to actually deal with real issues. Does that mean in a way that it's, it's going back to basics, the way the WEF was before all these uh, world-known figures came up here? I don't think you can ever put that genie back in the bottle. I don't think it's realistic to assume it's going to turn into some fireside chat with just a nice few people, even a couple of hundred people. The real obscenity here is not what goes on in the conference centre. There are many useful, interesting panels, relevant, important panels on how we will handle information technology, how society moves forward, what will we do in the fourth industrial revolution. The real obscenity, in my view, is what's happening out on the promenade. What we don't see. The, the sheer corporatization of this thing. It's worse than I've ever seen it before. Mm. The number of every shop just about is now taken over by a bank, an insurance company, a cloud computing company, some form of web services company. Does this even mean? Klaus, even Klaus Schwab, when I asked him about this, says he deplores what is happening out there. Quite naturally, because the discussions are going on there instead of here in the conference center. But does this mean that, that the real spirit of Davos that we're always talking about has vanished uh, on the promenade in these little uh, meeting rooms where, where, where the real discussions are taking place? Yes, I do think it has, because the level of access, this is all about access. Now, I, I, I'm privileged enough, you know, so I have the famous white badge. Where you come in everywhere. Where you can go sort of everywhere. I can't even find mine. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, the, the white badge. You better badge. find it before yeah. it sells. All right. So I have the white badge. But even this doesn't get you into certain meetings. Meetings igual, which is the groups of industries oh. that meet amongst themselves. Going along the promenade and finding something interesting. You can't go in. There's a, there's a man or a woman at a, at a door with, do you have an appointment? Do you have a reservation? Are you entitled to be here? That is not what Davos was about. Uh, something that Davos is about is always the theme, for example. So this year it's about globalization 4.0. What do you make of these themes? Is it, is it more than just, let's say, buzzword bingo, where, where we just put together everything that the issues seem to be at the moment? Well, the Davos theme uh, is a bit like tr trying to understand a foreign language. Um, the Davosian language that they use to it. It's a, it's a bunch of old nonsense. It's pretty useless. Oh, no, useless, totally. Most people spend no time just thinking about it other than... But I think the issue, the issue under... I mean, let me ask you a question, Lewis. Did you actually read the four-page document that came out when they announced the theme? The so-called manifesto, I did. But uh, it didn't tell me that much, I must say, because it's really... You're feeling all right. I, I, you didn't, then. <laughs> <laughs> we found the person who read the one person the who read the manifesto. Here who there you go. I'm a, I'm a good boy. You're not, Richard. You're not. No, the point. So I, I think I think the issue that it raises is very important. So uh, they call it the fourth industrial revolution. Um, I think you know the, the the change that's going to happen in this world as a result of digitization plus AI plus quantum computing and all these other things is going to be uh, not evolutionary but revolutionary. And it is well, right. It's nothing new. Everybody talks about it. Well, that, right? no, hang on, hang on. You say it's nothing new. It is new in the sense that we've known about it for the last few years, 
but we're only getting to grips now with what needs to be done. And I think there's a valid argument for saying, what does the architecture need to look like? Whether you can do anything about it is, is different. Because this place assumes that there is one civil society, one set of governments, mm -hmm. one common understanding. And it's not like that at all. The US, take what the US is doing now. The US, in its policies, is going against everything that this place stands for. Uh, th that was already the, the case last year, for example, yes. where with the, oh. with the visit of, of President Trump, it was America first. When we, when we go back two years ago, uh, uh, President Xi was here from China. It was more about globalization, which was quite surprising out of his mouth. Uh, what do you see the, the big trend, the boom this year, 2019? Could be, uh, what's in the air here? What's in the air is worry. Just how bad is it going to be? The slowdown? I mean, only this week we've had numbers from China showing that it's the slowest growth in some 20, 30 years. You've got, a you've got a trade war that promises to get worse. You've got a Brexit. We're about 65 days, 66, 7 days from Brexit. And only now is Theresa May putting forward uh, some proposals that might stand a chance of getting Parliament. Uh, you've got, uh, you have got uh, trade relationships in the world that are fraying, if not fractured, if not broken. Mm -hmm. That pessimism is, is, you can almost grasp it yeah. here in the air. And, and, and you know, it's reflected, by the way, also in reports, for example, yep. the Global CEO report coming out today. Uh, from and PWC. the Edelman Trust Barometer. All of them have Absolutely. <coughs> say the same thing. Yes. So having said that, would yes. you think or would you say 2019, the WEF could be one of, of doom and gloom? Oh, doom and gloom makes it sound like everybody's going to go and hang themselves outside by their knicker elastic. Uh, I don't think it's going to be anything like that. I think it's going to be worry. I think it's going to be a uh, concern. I do not, do not think we are reaching anywhere like the stages of 2009, 2010. Whenever you came here, the discussions were just, is this Armageddon? Mm -hmm. What needs to be done? How do we rescue the world's financial systems? Uh, you spoke about President Trump not attending the, uh, the WEF. It's yeah. not only him, it's the whole delegation that cancelled their visit. Uh, is this good for the WEF? Is this well, good for discussion? How, how do you I see asked it? Klaus that. He sort of, ah, but we still have 700 Plenty Americans. Ours, yes. yeah, yeah. Ah, but we have 66 world leaders. That's corporate America and the world you know, leaders. Yeah, um, but the reality is that those who are setting the agenda, many of them are still here. Davos is a mindset. You have to be able to get out of your everyday life, go into this Congress Center, and be prepared to open your mind and discuss. Mm -hmm. Now, what Davos, what they minded, what, what the organizers really want, and why the organizers hate the promenade, is because it's not engaging. It's not engaging inside. And I, the one thing I will say, and I'm no great supporter, I've criticized Davos many, mm -hmm. uh, WEF many times, but I will say they, don't, they really don't mind what you say, as long as you say it. Mm -hmm. They don't really mind what your views are, as long as you express it. This is about engagement. And if you look at the plan and you look at the thing, there's a range of issues. Sometimes I think they're a little pompous, they're often pretentious, right. and they're always overblown. And of course, there's that main criticism that there are almost too many issues, and we talk about everything, yeah. and we want to solve things, but they're never solved because it's so big. And no, all the issues no, are all they're around. never solved because it's a moving target. Mm -hmm. So if you solve this bit of Brexit today, you're immediately into the two-year transitional arrangement and what that will look like. Mm. If you solve the trade imbalance with China or the trade dispute, you immediately go into another battle over TPP or uh, with Europe. Australia's relationship in the world, th th there's, it is a moving target. But what I will say is, no matter the criticisms against this, if Davos did not exist, you would have to invent it. Because there is real value in the world's decision makers, forget this phrase elites, uh. decision makers, the world's decision makers coming together once a year to see where the landmines are, to see what they've got to be careful of. What do you stand for? I stand for this. What do you stand for? I stand for that. Where do you stand on this subject? Final question, 2019, the WEF. Are you looking forward to something? Is there something that you think that might be something that, you know, that might have that little hope of change or that might be the one thing no. that could be, uh, no. could be the no. trigger to something? No, 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 So you're no. quite no. pessimistic no. as well. No, what I'm looking forward to is what I call Davos moments. That 
quick and you'll always have those right? that quick chat with the crown prince of norway or wherever that meeting with the indian finance minister that two seconds two minutes that you had at the bar that chat that you had with the ceo of bp oh look there's the ceo of verizon i'll just have a quick chat with him those are the moments of communication of, of building relationships of right. discussing what's on the agenda that's what i'm looking forward to davos moments like this Richard Quest, have a great 17th personal with. Oi, 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 oi.